In this video, we're gonna discuss everything you need to know to start playing your 12 hole ocarina. So stick around. What's up, Black Amigos? My name is David, and this is the first video in a 12 lesson series titled How to Play Ocarina. This video series works right alongside of my new book of the same name, How to Play Ocarina, which is available at davideriramos.com store. It's available in physical and digital format, and in addition to everything we're gonna be discussing in these videos, it also has some fingering charts, some scales exercises, special arrangements to play with your friends. So if you'd like to grab your own copy, head on over to the link in the description down below. Or if you just wanna to stick to these video lessons, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to know whenever I post a new video for this series. Now let's go ahead and dive into the most important part of playing the ocarina, which is the instrument itself. Probably the number one question I get asked is which ocarina is best to start with, and while I do have a couple recommendations, there is one in particular that I usually recommend new students to stay away from. In the last couple years, there have been a flood of these new Zelda ocarinas that are really cheap, they're not very expensive, but they are of very poor quality, and these are all over the internet, all over Amazon, Banggood, you see ads on Facebook. They look like these two. These are from two different companies, but they are the exact same model. So the main problem that I found with these, of the multiple ones I've tried, over the last couple years is that they are just poorly tuned. They look okay. They have these decals of the Triforce on the windway, which is cool, but definitely the biggest criticism I've heard is just they're not tuned very well, although sometimes some people get lucky. So I'm not saying this to discourage you. If you do have one, you might have one that sounds okay, but I do recommend that you check it with a tuner or with someone who has a lot of music experience to make sure that it's in tune. And even if it's not in tune, you can still use these, especially for these video lessons, but I just want you to keep that in mind that if it's out of tune, it's not your fault, it's the instrument itself. So somewhere down the line, if you find out that something doesn't sound quite right, it could be the instrument. Now onto the ocarinas I do recommend. I have three plastic ocarinas that I really, really like. The tones are great, The they're very durable, and they are very affordable. So let's get started with the first one. The Night by Noble is often the highest recommended starter or plastic ocarina I've seen on the internet. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorites and the tone is excellent. It feels really good in the hand. I like the texture of the ocarina itself. It feels like it's you can get a good grip on it. It's not going to slip if your hands get sweaty for any reason. I like that it has this part where you can slip a string through or some sort of necklace. It's not too heavy and um, yeah, the tone hands down is the best of the three I'm going to show you today. It also just looks cool. It's really sleek and uh, this goes for about $30 on the internet. What's even cooler is that this plastic ocarina rivals many of my ceramic ocarinas in my collections in terms of how it plays and how it sounds. So this is definitely a great buy. However, if you are leaning towards a Zelda ocarina, this is probably one of the best ones I've tried. This is the STL Plastic Zelda Ocarina, and they also have the student models of this that come in different colors and without the Triforce, but this is definitely the one that's the most popular and that I've seen. It also has a place that you can put a little necklace or neck strap through, which is cool. It's not too heavy. The tone is actually very good, and it's about $25, so that's a good buy. And then finally, the most distributed ocarina I've seen is the Focalink Stein Plastic 12 Hole Ocarina. This is actually um, their newer model, the Osawa, but they do have an older version as well that I usually recommend. These are widely available throughout Europe, America, and Asia, so this is definitely probably the most accessible for a lot of you. The tone is very good. It comes in a variety of different colors in case you want to have a very special custom one for yourself. Once again, it also has a place where you can have a string or a necklace through, and it also runs about $25. Now let's talk about the different parts of the ocarina. First of all, you have the mouthpiece. This is where you blow to produce the tone. It goes down into the windway which makes your air flow into the body or the chamber of the ocarina. We change the pitches by covering and uncovering the tone holes, which you have 10 on top and two on the bottom. Uh, more specifically, these are sub holes, these two smallest ones, and then on the back you have two thumb holes. On the back here we also have the voicing, and this is where the sound is produced, so you never want to cover that one unless you have special circumstances, which we might talk about in the future. The largest part of the ocarina on this side is known as the capello, and this part is known as the tail, or the tip. And lastly, again, this is the front of the ocarina, or the top, and this is the bottom, or the back. Now let's talk about some ocarina playing etiquette and technique. First of all, good posture is extremely important, especially for breathing, so you want to make sure that you're sitting up nice and tall, preferably standing and not sitting, shoulders back, spine nice and upright, feet flat on the floor, and the less tension you feel on your body, the better that you're going to play. 
Once we make sure we have good posture, we want to focus on the breathing. When you're playing the ocarina, you want to inhale and exhale through the mouth. It really helps to get in as much air as possible, especially when you're playing through certain passages of music. So again, you're going to inhale and exhale through your mouth. You want to try breathing from your diaphragm, not your chest. I know this is kind of a weird concept, but you actually have a muscle here that helps to regulate your breathing, known as your diaphragm. So if you look at my kind of belly area here, you're going to see it expand every time I take a breath. And the other thing to note is that my chest and shoulders are not rising, they're staying stable. So this takes a little bit of practice. You can stand in a mirror, you can make sure that you are breathing from down here. You can also put your hand here to try to make it rise. And that's really going to help you in uh, having that proper breathing. And then finally, blowing into the ocarina also takes a special technique where you're basically going to be making the shape of the word two two, 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 and you can also practice this by feeling the air going to the palm of your hand. It should feel like a jet stream pointing into your hand. Now let's talk about finger placement. I switched to green so it's a little bit easier to see, but you wanna make sure that you have one hole on every single finger on top, except those two sub holes. Those are gonna stay open, and then also cover the thumb holes. And you wanna seal them completely, because if you don't fully cover every hole, air can escape, and that's gonna change your pitch. There should be a slight arch in your fingertips. You don't want it to be too rounded like this or too flat. That's gonna make it a little bit harder to play, so a slight arch. And there should be very little pressure. You don't wanna be squeezing super tight because you're gonna end up hurting the tips of your fingers and you might see like these little circles. And that's also gonna make it hard to play faster passages of music, so just lightly cover each tone hole, sealing them as best as you can. And the starting position is going to be this, all holes covered except those two sub holes, and this is going to be our first pitch, C. And now onto mouth placement. One of my favorite things about the ocarina is that it doesn't require any specific shape like an embouchure for brass instruments. So all you're going to do is lightly press it to your lips, no hard pressure. And as we're getting started here, we want to try to keep it parallel to the ground. So not like this, not like this, but more like this. And again, let's just try saying two, 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 two. Like that. This concludes our intro to the basics of playing the ocarina. In the next lesson, we're going to discuss a little bit of music theory and how you can use that to start playing the first couple notes of your ocarina. Once again, all this is available in my new book, How to Play Ocarina, which is available at davidericramoscom slash store. Or if you're interested in taking one-on-one -on -one lessons, you can also go to davidericramoscom slash about to learn a little bit more about my Skype or in-person lessons. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a like. Leave a comment down below to let me know what you're most excited about with playing your ocarina. And until the next lesson, I hope you guys have an amazing week. I'll see you then.